Hey, welcome to the Morning Mix podcast. We learned this morning that your folks have been teaching you a lot of different lessons throughout life. Yeah, the, that whole, like, I'll give you something to cry about. Yeah. Your room is dirty. I'm going to make it dirtier. And catch this baked potato. What? <laughs> We also found out that while you're out there living life, you're trying new things left and right. People are jumping out of airplanes or jumping off of cliffs. And Kelsey. Yeah. She really went out on a limb. What a risk she took. That and much more coming your way on the Morning Mix podcast. We found out what the top five SNL sketches of all time are, according to fan response on the internet. The top five become Celebrity Jeopardy with Will Ferrell and uh, uh, Norm MacDonald. And then you've got uh, Daryl Hammond as Sean Connery. They on and on and on. Matt Foley, the motivational speaker who lives in the van down by the river. The Chippendales audition between Patrick Swayze and uh, Chris Farley. Wayne's World with Mike Myers and Dana Carvey, just in general. And I need more cowbell. Those were your top five. But we said, okay, fine. What is your favorite Saturday Night Live sketch of all time? And no offense to Taylor Swift, but we got more texts than when we give you a trip to Brazil. Uh, oh, wow. Okay. It is a lot to keep up with. So I'm fire. I did my best to pull in what I could, but we'll fire through as many as we can. Coming in hot, what's your favorite sketch of all time? It's got to be Dana Carvey as the church lady. Oh, yes. Um, church lady is great. Satan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Satan. We also have coming in from 847s, 219s, 312s. It's got to be Debbie Downer. <laughs> 219 texted, and this one's, you got to be gentle with it, but cork soakers. If you've not seen the cork soakers sketch, I highly, I highly recommend. I believe it's Selma Hayek is hosting, and uh, they are in Italy, uh-huh. and they are recommending that in order for the yeah. wine, you got to soak the cork. <laughs> Before you can put it in the wine, but God. with the accent, cork kind of loses the R a little bit, yeah. Yeah. and you're soaking something else. There's a sofa one similar. Yes, mm-hmm. there's, there's Which a lot. I will lot. not say. We can't. You know what we can say though? <laughs> Sweaty balls. Oh yeah. Do you remember watching that for the first time? Oh, forget about mm-hmm. it. And your my brain exploded. Like I could <laughs> not understand what was happening. How how they were able to do that? How yeah. did they figure out how to do that? Is pretty hilarious. Also, how they figured this one out. This one came in from a number of folks. We got to go back to Eddie Murphy on Saturday Night Live. Boy, you know, when I grew up, we were uh, we were big fans of Mr. Rogers Neighborhood. (laughs) But boy, Mr. Robinson's Neighborhood was a little different. I love how when somebody come to the door, it would always be Mr. Landlord. But he would go like this. Who is it? (laughs) To this day, I will sometimes say to myself, who is it? And make myself laugh. Left out the window. Yes, exactly. Because the landlord wants (laughs) money. Yeah. Right. Uh, anyway, man. it's very funny and very of its time. I think we can. I think we can find that moment. Yeah. Oh, yeah, hang on a it? Exactly. We just have whip do it. Hang on. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. All right. Let me rattle off through seven seven three. By the way, Mr. Robinson's neighborhood. Thank you for that one. Sweaty balls is in here a lot. Cork soakers is in here a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, Coneheads. That's a nice throwback oh, yeah. one. Schmidt's gay. You gotta <laughs> love that beer. Adam Sandler. Yeah, right? Chris Chris Farley, Farley, really, yeah. It almost feels like after they did that, they got the idea for Billy Madison because it's like them all by the pool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Peyton Manning and the insurance oh. kids commercial where he's pelting the kids with the football. Oh, good. So I good. like that. Buckwheat, that's a great one. Yep. I like that one. Uh, let's see. Michael Jordan with Stuart Smalley looking yeah. in the mirror. Yep. yep. Smart enough. And God darn it, people like me. Chris Kattan as a Southern lawyer. I don't know if I remember that one, but I do remember Chris Kattan as the monkey. Mr. Peepers. Mr. Peepers. That's on here yeah. a lot. Yeah. The Barry Gibb talk show <laughs> from a 708. That one's great. So that's Timberlake and Fallon. Oh, so the Barry Gibb talk show. Talk them out. We also have Justin Timberlake. It's got to be the old D and the B. Yeah, yeah. You know someone was at a pitch meeting. Like, no, 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 it's going to work. I'm just He's going to say any questions and people are going to love it. No, well, they did. So there it is. 24 million views on YouTube alone. Bill Hader and Seth MacFarlane with the puppets. That one's great. The Samurai Taylor. That's a great sketch. Dan Aykroyd and Jane Curtin, Shards of Glass Toys for Kids. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Senior Alexa. That one was great. It's oh, like a digital yeah. short of Senior Alexa. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's a nice one. This one came in quite a bit. More recently, you've got Kate McKinnon, Ryan Gosling, and Cecily Strong after they've encountered aliens. So many sketches. I encourage you to go check them all out on Saturday Night Live. But then I thought, well, what if we go to Saturday Night Live's YouTube channel and we sort by most popular video just to see what is the most popular video right here on the SNL YouTube channel? In at number three, it's Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone doing the Spider-Man kiss from nine years ago with 70 million views. Mm. In at number two is Black Jeopardy with Tom Hanks, which is hilarious, Mm -hmm. Okay, with 77 million views. 
And with 101 million views from eight years ago, it is the porn teacher where the teacher, hot for teacher, the teacher thinks that they are in a porn. Well, and the teacher is played by Amy Schumer. Okay. I don't remember, remember this one either. I don't remember that. Maybe. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, it's got 100 million. Right. Uh, yeah. Views. Just a lot of people online wanted to watch that. Yeah. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> they looked up the wrong porn right, teacher right, video. Right, right. Was there a malfunction in right. the wardrobe or something? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah, what the... It's like an after school special as if it were acted upon by uh, porn actors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From Chicago to your device, this is the Morning Mix Podcast. Arnold Schwarzenegger appeared on uh, Jimmy Kimmel, and they were talking about the lessons they learned as kids from their parents. I shared with you guys, my mom wants to teach us a lesson. Uh, we were fighting so much, she pinned my brother to the ground and handed us a wiffle ball bat and said, go ahead, beat the ass out of him. I don't care. She said the whole word. You guys are jackasses. I don't care. <laughs> we were all like, oh, my God, we broke mom. <laughs> Everything stops. All right, everybody, let's all just hug. <laughs> you guys want to go watch Saved by the Bell? We'll see you later. Yeah. Gave mom about a, an hour break. Let her go catch her and breath. Like, what's wrong with you, like, mom? Sorry, Why yeah, are you right. freaking out yeah, all the time? I think it was us. I, I <laughs> <My know. God. laughs> Destroying the house. But it happens. Mom and Dad had to teach you a lesson. Let's find out what happened with Molly. Good morning, Molly. How are you? I'm doing well. Love you guys. Oh, love you right back. Your dad had to teach you a lesson. What happened? He sure did. We were sitting down at dinner, and, you know, I was the, you know, middle schooler that I was with attitude. We were eating. Must have been taking too big of bites or something because my dad pulled uh, his full-on baked potato, sour cream and all. On the end of his fork, took a bite and said, does that look nice? And, of course, the smart aleck I was, I said, sure it does. And he proceeded to fling the whole potato at me. Okay. So to teach you to take smaller bites, your dad (laughs) threw a baked potato at you. Yes, he did. Okay, (laughs) got it. I want to make sure I had it. Okay. The cliff notes. That's crazy. A food fight. Okay. Yeah, I guess that kind of yeah. yeah, checks yeah, out. Yeah, a food fight where you can't throw anything back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like dodgeball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then you have to you, then you have to clean it up. Right. Like, wait, what? That's fun. Mm. Hi, Julie. How are you this morning? Good. How are you? We're doing really well. Like most kids, you had a very messy room. Is that right? We did. Yep. I shared a room with my sister, and if our room was not cleaned up, my mother would walk in in the morning before she went to work while we were sleeping, proceed to empty every single drawer in our dressers, and then walk over to the closet, take her arm, clear out all of our bookshelves. Everything would be on the floor, and then she wouldn't even skip a beat. She'd look at us both and be like, yeah, it better be done by the time I get home. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wait, I don't get it. She would make a bigger mess? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, like the whole floor would be covered with stuff, and she'd be like, yeah, I don't care. I want it done by the time I get home. As a parent, though, I kind of like the hack of I just bought myself an hour of quiet. You know what I mean? Because they have to clean up the <laughs> yeah, whole room. True. Like, okay. So if the room was a mess, I'm going to make it a bigger mess, yeah. and now you have to clean it up. All right, that's, that's kind of difficult. Hi, Tanya. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing well. How are you? Good. Now, your son was a bit of a snooper, huh? Was snooping around looking for the gift? Yeah. So we received a package in the mail, and he shook it, and he could tell that there were Legos in there (laughs) for either Christmas or birthday. So I made him go to the store with me to return it. Whoa! Oh, Oh, this could have been yours. (laughs) You could have had this if you could have just been patient and waited for your birthday. Harsh. I know. (laughs) Did he stop snooping after that? No, he still snooped, but I wanted yeah. to send the message. Yeah, wow. <laughs> he missed the message and he didn't even get right. the light goes. Oh, man. Hi, Angie. How are you? I'm good. Love your list, Angie. Love it. Now, Angie, uh, what happened? You guys were a little messy and uh, your, so, your folks were sick yeah. of it? I was a typical teen, you know, just a slob. I had a dad who was, uh, you know, ex-Marine, so he wanted things neat. And I never cleaned my room. He'd be like, clean your room, clean your room. So one day walking home from high school with my friends, get towards my house, and there is everything from my bedroom floor all over the front lawn. Dang. Yes. Whoa. That happened to me, too. Really? Yep. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Um, everything. I was so embarrassed. Yeah. It's terrible. <laughs> It sounds pretty real. Well, yeah, and I don't no even kidding. have a lawn. My stuff was just on Ashland on the sidewalk <laughs> in garbage bags. Wow. I was like, oh, someone's no. going to take this. In garbage bags? Yeah, they. I oh. never put my clothes away after the laundry. That was ah. my one step I was supposed to do, and I didn't. Dang. Hmm. Hi, Liz. How are you this morning? Good. 
I'm doing really well. I'm going to remember not to talk back to you, Liz, because what happens when that when that happens? Well, she talked back, and then she copped an attitude with me, too. And so I said, I'm going to make you do chores. She said, maybe I want to do chores. So I said, oh. okay. So I got the mop bucket, and I. she said, where's the mop? I said, you're not using a mop. And I got her a toothbrush and a rag and made her scrub grout. Boom. Full metal jacket. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, that's not great. Yep. Oh, wow. Liz's daughter cleaned yep. the grout with a toothbrush. Yeah. Uh, Molly's dad threw a baked potato right at her. Julie's room was uh, such a mess, mom would come in and make it an even bigger mess. Joke's on you, punk. Mm-hmm. Okay. Angie was a slob, so uh, they threw all of her stuff out the front window for her on her walk home from school. And Tanya's son snooped, so she said, hey, guess what? We're going to go return that gift. You're not going to get it for your birthday. Joke's on you. Nikki, what do you like? These are intense, gang. These are, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I think the the clearing the bookshelves and throwing more stuff on the floor, yeah, everything like on the down. floor at once. Uh, yeah, that is that's yeah, mommy, go big or go mom, home, man. Mommy dearest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no wire hangers. No, wire. <laughs> no ever hangers. No. Uh, baked potato. Yes, sir. I just like that one. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I like the Legos ones because I feel like that's an actual lesson. Like it, it didn't land, but right. yeah. uh, but you know, it was like n- no harm, no foul. Yeah. They didn't make it worse. He's just trying to teach a lesson. I got to be honest with you guys. Some of these scare me. Yeah, uh, yeah I'm very a little, much. You know what I mean? Yep. I'm like, oh man. Yep. So I am gonna go right there with baked potato because that's, that's just good fun. Good that's funny. Quality. You can oh, launch the baked potato at you. That's a funny thing. Molly, congratulations. You're listening to the Morning Mix podcast. You decided to finally try something new because Pete Wentz, a fallout boy, has told Nylon.com, so much traffic to that website, that life is so short you owe it to yourself to try something new every chance you get. What new thing have you tried? Good morning, Diana. Morning. How are you today? Oh, good. Just love you guys. <laughs> oh, we love you right back. What did you d- decide to try for the first time ever? I jumped off a cliff in Cancun recently, so. Whoa! Oh. Cliff diving! Yeah. Okay, so you got were you guys on the trip and you saw people doing it and you thought, we should go try that? Is that what happened? Yeah, pretty much. It was like a tourism that we were doing, and they were giving you the options to zip line or cliff dive. So, why the cliff jump? Wow. So, how far would you say, like, in feet? Was it like 10 feet, 15, 20? Uh, between 10 and 15. Woo! That's a whole story. Yeah. Ouch. Wow. And it all went well, obviously, because here we are. We're all good. We're all good. No broken bones. Wow. Good. Okay. So, Diana Cliff Dove. That's a big one. That's Ooh, a little. Yeah. That's scary. Oh, Shauna. Shauna, good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Shauna, I'm great. You've done something that I really want to do. What was the thing you did for the first time? I started racing um, derby cars at the South Bend Motor Speedway. Let's go! You're racing cars, Shauna. That's awesome. Are you? Have you always been into racing? Has it been a thing you've been a fan of, or did you just decide, like, you know what? I'm going to go race cars. It's on my bucket list to drive a race car, so I did it, and it was awesome. This will be. I'll be racing tomorrow, and it'll be like my third time. Okay, I so even raced my my own everyday everyday car. Too. Really? <laughs> just for fun? I'm like yeah. the Kennedy? You just <laughs> drop the hammer and see yeah. what happens? Well, I used to street race back in the day, but um, this is, uh, I race on the, on the track. It's called the Spectator's Race. That's awesome. Okay, so Shauna is out racing. Mm-hmm. And please welcome to the show, sincerely, Kelsey. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing well, thanks. Kelsey, what did you try new for the first time recently? Starting listening to the mix on my commute to work. Oh, God. God. I love it. Thanks. So how long have you been with us, Kelsey? Like a couple of weeks, a couple of days? Where are we at? A, like a month, about a month, because I started my commute. I reverse commute, so I live in the city, and I commute out to the suburbs. Okay, great. What do you like about the show so far? And be honest. You don't have to butter us up. It's okay. Honestly, I like how you guys talk with each other. I feel oh. like it's very real. I feel like I'm sitting in a room of like people who like are friends with each other oh that's oh nice God, hey it's working you you are, nice. it's like we we need you in our next meeting with all of our bosses we yeah. totally should uh what don't <laughs> no, you like it sounds so real. What, what, what don't you like oh why do you want to ruin our day chris come on it's effort like friday the commute. oh you don't like the commute okay, great okay. answer kelsey yeah. Yeah. we are free and clear kelsey you're listening to the morning mix podcast we need to look at your zodiac sign and then tell you what that means about you at the gym we're going to get a variety of folks here with different Zodiac signs, and we'll tell you what your Zodiac sign says all about you when it comes to pumping iron. 
I'm getting hot and sweaty at the gym. That's what people do at the gym, right? I haven't been to one in a while. Is, it still, mm-hmm. is yeah. that still the vibe? I yeah. think so. Okay. It's, it's the goal. Okay. I don't want to distract us too much with Age of Aquarius in the background, so we're going to go to our workout mix. <laughs> yep, this is it. We really get you going. <laughs> yeah, this is the one. <laughs> uh-huh. Hey, Jackie, good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? We're doing really well. Do you find yourself working out a lot, Jackie? Um, A decent amount. <laughs> decent amount. I love that more than me. All right, Jackie, what's your sign? I'm an Aries. An Aries. Okay. Based on the information I have here from an astrologer, this is what the Aries folks' gym personality is. Jackie, as an Aries, you don't know the meaning of gym anxiety. That's right. You're competitive and you're outgoing. You're going to march right into that gym. You're going to go right to your favorite machine and you're going to work out without hesitation. The best workout for you would be a high-intensity workout or a boot camp style class. Does that sound right? All right. I'd say on a good day, that's definitely right. Okay. Okay. So we'll yeah. go, it's, it's not we'll go no. with that. Mm-hmm. All right. Aries, there you go. Enjoy your workouts with your high-intensity. Hmm. The hit. H-I-I-T. Get ready for it. Hey, Alyssa, how are you this morning? I'm good. How are you today? Great. What's your sign, Alyssa? I'm an Aries, too. Oh, you are an Aries. Okay, well, then great. Then we know. Do you like a high-intensity workout? Yeah, I'm actually on my way to the gym right now. Let's and, go. yes, I got first place in the row competition this week for my Aries. Hey. 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 Master rower. Do you win a prize for that? Um, Bragging rights. Bragging rights. Yeah. She's on the radio talking about it. Boom. That's right. All right, congrats to Alyssa. Now we go here. Hi, Tracy. How are you this morning? I'm good. How are you? Great. Tracy, what's your sign? I'm a Leo. Okay. Do you like to work out? You go to the gym? Yes. Okay, early, good. Early morning. Early morning. Let's find out. Tracy, as a Leo, this is your gym personality. You treat the gym like your own private workout facility, even if it's packed. Yeah, that's right. You're friends with everybody that works there. You're not afraid to walk around and use any equipment that's there. In fact, as a fire sign, you're usually the first person in the door mm. for that group fitness class or just to get your workout in. Your favorite spot at the gym is right in front of everybody else. Does that feel right, Tracy? I mean, part of it, definitely right. Yeah, I'm one of the first ones for sure. All right, we'll call yeah. it that. Early Nicely fire. done. Leo's, man. They like getting in front, apparently. I don't know. All right, Melissa, good morning. How are you? Hi, I'm doing great. How are you? We're great. What's your sign? Virgo. Virgo. Okay, and do you uh, work out a lot? Do you go to the gym? Yes, we go every day, my daughter and I. Oh, great. You and your daughter go. This is great because you're with a friend. So, Virgos, do not approach or talk to a Virgo when they're at the gym, as this practical earth sign is way too busy following the strict routine that they have pre-planned at home. They're super meticulous about their workouts, and they love to keep detailed records of their progress and their achievements. Melissa, does that sound like you? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yep. Bummer. Well, here's what we're going to do, Melissa. You guys can go get your walking and your steps in. A four-pack of passes to Morton Arboretum. You can take the whole family. Awesome. Thank you so much. You bet. Yeah, it's like a healthy, fun activity yeah, for nice. everybody. Yeah, and you get all that fresh air. All right, mortonarb.org for tickets. Melissa, what kind of workouts are you and your daughter doing when you guys go to the gym together? Like classes or just free working out? No, no classes. I don't like being around anybody. I just want to, I not that I won't talk to anyone, but I just like to do my bike. And then I do the treadmill. I'm like super boring. Like I spend way too much time there. Like, if I would just be more intense about my workout, I could probably get done in, like, half an hour, but I just don't want to sweat that much. Mm -hmm. Yep. I know that vibe. You're kind of there. You're like, no, I'm here. I'm at least doing something. And all of a sudden, four hours have gone by. You're like, I should get a shake and get out of here. Putting in the time. Did we get your sign, Nikki? Libra, no. Libra. Okay, great. Here we go. Libras. A trip to the gym is mostly an excuse to show off your newest workout clothes. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Mm. No. You're there to strut (laughs) through the building like a model on a runway. Uh, Pay close attention to their appearance. And your Libras will always be wearing the most stylish outfits yeah. from Aldi. What yeah. are the odds? Yeah. <laughs> a Ben Folds t-shirt from yeah, like right? 10 years ago. Oh, yes. wow. I got that. That's good. Oh Whip, you're uh... <laughs> Did we get you, Whip? I think he said Virgo, right? Virgo, yeah, we it did. It was okay. the uh, high intensity, keep uh, detailed records and I mean, things that I was right with our caller. Nope. No, but although last night you ran up and down your stairs a few times to try to get some work in. Try to see if my Apple Watch would actually understand what I'm doing. It doesn't. It doesn't know me the way it says it. It, mm. it does. V, did we get you? No, Pisces. Pisces. Let's I'm go curious. fish. Let's go fishing. 
a Pisces, when you arrive at the gym, you tend to stand in the doorway in stunned silence. It's going to take you a while to get your bearings. It's a sense of a sign that likes to have a more intuitive approach to fitness. That's true. That's why I do yoga. Yeah, right? All right, now I'm a Scorpio according to this one. So I go into the gym with my headphones firmly jammed into my ears, blasting hypnotic beats, as you guys know. (laughs) This water sign will not want to talk to anyone or be social at all. Now, I'm also a cusp with the Sagittarius. The Sagittarius will sign up for a gym membership and promptly forget to go. That is me. Okay. I just finally canceled my Peloton and membership. Mm After months. Now, we did not get Aquarius in real quick. Aquarii, you all take unconventional approaches to your gym sesh, experimenting with new workout routines and equipment. Capricorns, you approach the gym like everything else in your life with discipline and focus. You're going to sign up immediately for their 15-step leg day routine that they just did a competition on, and you're going to join it, and you don't even care. And then you're going to go do a special cool down that was designed by a trainer, and you're going to be there three times a week at the same exact time every time. Lots happening there. We got Libras in, right? You're going to the gym to show off your newest workout set. Virgos, we talk to you, and you don't want us to talk to you when you're at the gym. (laughs) Leos, you think it's your own private place. Cancers, you find yourself at the gym. It's because you got a coupon to go for a free class. There you go, Cancers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Gemini, you think the gym is just a social playground. You're there to do some group class and chat up the person next to you. You like doing things like Zumba so that you can show everybody. This is how this move goes, guys. Okay, great. No, you're doing great, Donna. Keep it up. Okay, here we go, Alice. That's you. Taurus, you are a great Ford vehicle, and you're early in the morning or late at night because you hate crowds. That's when Tori go and work out, and I think that covers everybody. From Chicago to your device, this is the Morning Mix Podcast. These are your mixed top six most common lies we are all using in our day-to-day lives. Let's hear them. In at number six. Oh, I'm so sorry. I don't have any change. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I don't have no, any man. change. There's yeah. no change here. Nope. Sorry. And at number five, oh, it's so nice to see you. <laughs> Most common lies, we say, uh, in our day-to-day oh, lives. No. Oh, it's so good to see you. You usually don't leave at this time yeah, so wild. right now. We really do need to catch up. Uh. In at number four, most common lies we say, oh, you know what? I'm so busy then, unfortunately. I can't do it. I'm busy. I'm busy, and I'm busy then, and I'm busy now, and I'm Every busy day. later. I'm busy, busy, busy. In at number three, the most common lies we tell. Oh, I'm listening. <laughs> no, I'm listening. I am listening. I'm listening. Tell me what I said. Um, I hate that one. So I'm like, well, we're tell me not what children. I just said. No, yeah. I'm not telling you nothing. What? <laughs> exactly. And at number two, the most common lies we use in our day-to-day lives. You know what? I'm going to do that tomorrow. <laughs> uh, no sweat, hon. Mm-hmm. I'll do it tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, I'll do it tomorrow. Oh, what? Yeah, tomorrow. I'll do it. No sweat. Are you listening? What? Three weeks goes by. Mm-hmm. And in number one, Nikki, what's the most common lie, now that you get the vibe, that we say all the time? Oh, a common lie we tell ourselves. Um, I'll eat healthy Tonight, today. Yeah. <laughs> T- tomorrow is the day. Tomorrow's yeah. day one of my diet. All right, yeah. whip. Um, I'm I'm five minutes away. I'm, I'm like, seriously oh, I'm right there. Oh, that's a good I'm one. right there. Five minutes out. Yeah, I yeah, love that. Yeah. Um, um, I miss you. I miss you. Okay. <laughs> Oh my God, whenever you say that now, no yeah. one's going to believe yeah. you. Yeah. Well, it's number probably one. not true. I would have seen you if I really wanted Eventually. to. The number one lie we all use most often is, oh, I forgot. Oh, okay. oh you yeah. didn't forget. really forget? You didn't forget anything. No. Honorable mentions go to, I've got no money. So sorry, I just got no, I got no <laughs> money on me. Nikki, you got these beers? Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I was stuck in traffic, which is basically whips. Yeah. I'll be there in five yeah, minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boy, I don't know what happened there. <laughs> number nine. <laughs> no, you planned the whole thing. Like yeah. Catch all. I don't know use that for yeah. everything. Yeah. Right, right. You know what I mean? <laughs> Love that. You burned dinner. Yeah. What happened to the dinner? I don't know what happened there. That's <laughs> so weird. There. <laughs> not sure. And then the final one is generally not disclosing how much you actually paid for a thing you bought. Aha. Uh-huh. Nikki, how much was that? Yeah, it's hard to say. Right. You know, I, right. you know what? I wasn't. I'm not listening. What? Was, I forgot. Was, and I'll do it yeah. tomorrow. It was none. Yeah. That's fine. I got stuck in traffic. Uh, testing one two one two. Sound check. Sound check. This is Nikki sound check on the morning mix. So let's start with um, uh, Bad Bunny. We talked about him earlier. He's going to be hosting and the musical guest on Saturday Night Live. Also, will be here in Chicago in March. So hey. just announced oh, a huge, huge world tour. Uh, well, U.S. tour to start, and it's going to be uh, United. States Center in March. So you oh, wow. do that thing now where you have to register for tickets because they're not on sale yet, got but it. you got to register, get verified, get waitlisted, all of that. 
Just get it done before Tuesday. Or you could just show up to like a Bulls game the night before and then just hide under a seat. Don't try that. And then suddenly the show comes on. Boom, you're here. Boom, act like a mannequin in the hey, gift shop. That's an idea. <laughs> Wait, it works. I'm thinking about it. Uh, and then Rolling Stones. You know, we've talked about uh, their new stuff. Uh, first album in 18 years released. It's called Hackney Diamonds. And a lot of people are really liking it. So, we, you know, we've talked about it. It's got uh, Lady Gaga on it. It's got Paul McCartney on it. Stevie Wonder's on it. A lot of people uh, have showed up. The, the Rolling Stones themselves, they showed up last night to a club in New York City. It was called Racket. 650 people oh, wow. in this club. Okay, That's so crazy. think about that. That is smaller than the Metro. I don't know. What's, what, is it like now, smaller uh, than House of Blues? I remember when they played Double Door here in the 90s, so uh, maybe, which was probably about that size, 500-ish, whatever it was. Yeah. yeah. But so, even just thinking 650... Most stadiums they play are somewhere probably in the range of 60,000. Yeah, yeah. So that's crazy. So, yes, they showed up. And let's just keep in mind, Mick Jagger is 80. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He's got the moves, though. He's got oh, he does. Yeah, he's he does. Those moves. And he brought a friend along with him. So not only uh, was Lady Gaga on the album, but she also showed up to this gig. So imagine it's wow. the Rolling Stones and Lady Gaga at a 650 uh, capacity place in New York City. Jumpin' Jack Flash, they did some other older songs, too. So it wasn't just all the new stuff, wow. which was cool. But just, uh, hey, man, the idea that they did a late cool. night concert, yeah. 650, like like you mentioned, Whip, the fact that they did the Double Door so long ago and are still doing it. It's amazing. Uh, I will say this. I saw them two times in 1997. This is no joke. I literally said, I better go twice or as many times as I can because, you know, they're not going to be around much right. longer. And I was yeah. actually thinking, like, really not going to no. be around. Right. And yet here we are in 2023. Yeah. And yeah. Other than Charlie the Watch, the drummer, they're all still yeah. around. It Drugs is. and booze really preserved the it system. Does. I mean, look at, look at Keith. It's, yeah. it's yeah, unreal. So hopefully there will be a big tour. Yes, uh, to, next up, the Sphere. That would be That's cool. what I want to oh, see. That's yeah. actually a really smart point yeah. that they would just sit down somewhere. Yeah. Them trying traveling, you know, they're getting right. old, and, and that's a good point. I like I that. I like it. Yeah. All right, well, you two just extended that, so <gasps> they're going to have to share that. some space. Maybe yeah. they'll do the Harry Styles thing where it's just pockets of you, the America, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're going to do Madison Square Garden, then United Center, and then somewhere in Dallas, and something in Maine. Right. So, yeah. we, we planned this whole in Maine, in Bar Harbor. Why yeah. not? Why not? Um, all right, and then we've got some new stuff uh, out as well, and yeah, this is such a, it's such a crazy time in music right now. No, I've always so said that. we're talking about Rolling Stones and Lady Gaga doing stuff together, and then I have a song for you now uh, by Marshmello, okay. Pink, Ooh. Pink, and Sting. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> you, dream, you dream this. I can't. It it like this isn't is real. Is it an exactly. Englishman in New York remix? Come on. Okay. Come on. There's, uh, there's a lot. So Desert Rose? It, it, there's a little Fields of Gold, definitely. Okay. Just, so, just heads up on that. Um, and then I, I'll get, wait, here, let's hear the song, and then I'll okay. give you some Sting and Pink updates after this. The Morning Mix Flash Briefing with Violetta. So there is a story um, out of California. There's a restaurant owner there who was shocked last week to see a delivery driver eating the food he was supposed to be delivering right in the parking lot. Hmm. So his security camera caught this. He kind of saw the guy like wasn't leaving. So he's like, let me go check. Maybe something's wrong with the food. I don't know. Whatever. Goes out there, sees the guy eating, accuses him of eating the food. The guy's like, no, no, this is my food. He's like, okay, fine. He leaves, continues to watch the security camera, sees the to-go containers that he's ripping open and blah, 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 blah. So they do it, go a step further and call the family because they were regulars to this restaurant. It was a small mom and pop shop and calls them and says, like, I wouldn't eat that food. We saw the guy tampering with it, eating it, whatever. So anyway, this is leading to a lot of questions, obviously, about food delivery drivers and also how restaurants can maybe uh, take precautions to seal. And if the seal is broken, then mm. you know that somebody touched it or opened it after the restaurant it was gave delivered. it delivered. Wow. Right. Mm. So it's kind of, yeah, kind of a gross situation. And the um, questions makes you kind of icky. Anyway, <laughs> the next story is a little bit better. Uh, there's a life motto uh, that's read in poetry form that's going viral right now. Life is a waste of time. Time is a waste of life. Get wasted all the time, and you'll have the time of your life. There you go. <laughs> Happy Great. Friday. Something I do. <laughs> and lastly, Blake Shelton moved his uh, wife, yeah, Gwen Stefani, to tears as he recalled the first time that they met. This all happened at the Hollywood Walk of Fame where Gwen Stefani was honored with a square. Blake praised his wife for being the perfect person. He said she wasn't like any other famous person that he ever met. She drove herself to The Voice and came with kids in tow. He's like, they were chaos. They didn't even need security because nobody wanted to get close to them. Um, and that was back in 2014. 
2017, which I didn't realize that they knew each other for such a long time. They tied the knot. Yeah. Tied the knot in 2021. He said being a mom is her number one job and continues to be to this day. And Gwen just started like bawling. They're Mm -hmm. so in love. It's disgusting. Mm. You ever see the picture of her getting Sting's autograph? No. I just saw it again yesterday. It's a real thing. You can Google it. She's... (laughs) He's holding an album or something, and she is approaching him while he's on a motorcycle. I don't know where this was, but it's really her, and she's like 15 years old or something. Wow. Yeah. Man. They're just like us. They really are. That's she crazy. is. Yeah. Apparently, and Blake agrees. Mm-hmm. That's your flash briefing. All right. Thank you for joining us for the Morning Mix podcast. Make sure you rate, review, like, and follow this podcast. You can also follow us on social at 1019 Mix Chicago, and we will see you tomorrow on the Morning Mix.